Well, welcome to this recorded Holy Eucharist. It's a Holy Eucharist being put on here at St. Sadorans in Hentland after we've gone into a firebreak lockdown here in Wales. It's for the communities of Hentland and Tlanevid and for anybody else um, who might be able to follow this and learn to worship God in this ancient building, this ancient worship site here on this holy ground. It is Bible Sunday and I'll read the Holy Eucharist through this Church in Wales 2004 book which can be found on the Church in Wales website if you pause this video and wish to follow along. Some people will have books. I'll read the responses as we go along. So we come together to worship. And Reynolds Hard, Amab, Arosbriglan. Grass at a nether, a fogodachwe, at Gadoldi and Harriad Christ. Heavenly Father, all hearts are open to you. No secrets are hidden from you. Purify us with the fire of your Holy Spirit, that we may love and worship you faithfully through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We come to the time in our service where we kneel before God, where we come before God and bring all the things for which we wish God to wipe clean, to lift us up in Jesus who forgives us. Arguez Trigaha Arguez Trigaha Christ have mercy Christ have mercy Arguez Trigaha Arguez Trigaha Heavenly Father, we have sinned in thought, word and deed and have failed to do what we ought to have done. We are sorry and truly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us in his way to walk as children of light. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you and set you free from sin strengthen you in goodness and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our collect for our Bible Sunday, Blessed Lord who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, help us so to hear them, to read, mark, learn and inwardly digest them that through patience and the comfort of your holy word, we may embrace and forever hold fast the hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who is alive and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Now here, a reading, a reading from the book of Nehemiah, chapter 8. All people gathered together into the square before the water gate. They told the scribe Ezra to bring the book of the Lord of Moses, which the Lord had given to Israel. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women, all who could hear with understanding, this was on the first day of the seventh month. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of men and the women and those who could understand and the ears of all people were attentive to the book of the law 
the scribe Ezra stood on a wooden platform that had been made for the purpose, and beside him stood Mattathiah, Shema, Aniah, Uriah, Hilkiah, and Messiah. On his right hand, and Padiah, Mishael, Malchijah, Hashem, Hashbadana, Zachariah, and Meshalem on his left hand. And Ezra opened the book in the sight of all the people, for he was standing above all the people. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. And then Ezra blessed the Lord, the great God, and all the people answered, Amen, Amen. Lifting up their hands, and they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces on the ground. So they read from the book, from the law of God, with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And Nehemiah, who was the governor, and Ezra, the priest, scribe, and the Levite, who taught the people, said to all the people, This day is holy to the Lord your God. Do not mourn or weep, for all the people wept when they heard the words of the law. And then he said to them, Go your way, eat the fat and drink sweet wine and send portions of them to those for whom nothing is prepared. For this day is holy to our Lord and do not be grieved for the joy of the Lord is your strength. And so the Levites stilled all the people saying, be quiet for this day is holy. Do not be grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they'd understood the words that were declared to them. Now going to pray through Psalm 119, chapter 119, Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. How can young people keep their way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Do not let me stray from your commandments. I treasure your word in my heart, so that I may not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare of the ordinances of your mouth. I delight in the way of your decrees as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. So hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Saint Matthew. And the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn. And then they will see the Son of God coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send out his angels with a loud trumpet call, and they will gather his elects from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. And so also, when you see all these things, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And to start with a heartwarming story. A heartwarming story many of us in Wales will be very familiar with. In the year 1800, a 15-year-old Welsh girl named Mary Jones trekked 26 long miles 
through the rugged terrain of North Wales to buy a Welsh language Bible. Mary was so determined to have a Bible of her own in her own language that she could understand that she saved up for six long years before walking across the varied and often difficult terrain to Bala. With the help of Reverend Thomas Charles of Bala, who arranged lodgings for Mary and sold her three Bibles for the price of war, Mary Jones' determination was rewarded. Her faith and dedication to hold a Welsh Bible in her own hand inspired what is now the global giant, the Bible Society, who are dedicated to faithfully endeavouring to ensure that the Bible is made available for every man, woman and child all around the world. Naturally, our readings from the Bible today both speak of the Word of God and the Psalm, but I want to draw your attention back to the first reading from the book of Nehemiah. See, as Ezra reads aloud from the preserved and recovered book of the law, the assembled listening, because not everybody could read, and the concept of those listening who could understand those listening who could understand comes up four times. Verse 2. Accordingly, the priest Ezra brought the law before the assembly, both men and women and all who could hear with understanding. Verse 3. He read from it facing the square before the water gate from early morning until midday in the presence of the men and the women and those who could understand. Verse 8. So they read from the book, from the law of God with interpretation. They gave the sense so that the people understood the reading. And finally, verse 12, and all the people went their way to eat and drink and to send portions and to make great rejoicing because they had understood the words that were declared to them. Everybody that could understand. But what do we mean by understand? We've been living our lives as part of Western society, which over the years we've witnessed it striving forward in all directions with a deep desire, a real need to understand, to dissect things, to scientifically prove and to explain with authority. We've come a long way in doing so in a short space of time as well. And still, Jesus, to whom there is a degree of certainty, he historically existed, Jesus can still comfortably be described as fully human, fully God. Our times clamour for understandings and we're still no closer no closer to scientifically proving if God is or if God is not. Well, let me assure you, God is. And so to truly understand these scriptures handed to us through the ages, they truly come alive when we fully, fully believe that in our hearts and in our very being, God is speaking to us through these scriptures. In last week's sermon here, I mentioned how we can take hope in these difficult times because that same historically proven Jesus said, though times <clears throat> of toughness will come. This word, this difficult times will happen. And it says in verses six to eight in this week's scripture, you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. 
see that you are not a land, for this must take place. But the end is not yet, for nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Jesus said these words to his disciples. Jesus says these words to us now, his disciples. Jesus says this to us now in this global pandemic. Words of comfort. And then we heard that comfort at the end of our gospel reading today. Matthew 24, 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Jesus' word will not pass away. The Lord loves us, and that's why Jesus said these words that will not pass away. He was right in verse 34 too that precedes this verse that in that same generation terrible things would come to pass. The temple was destroyed and people of that same religious tradition of that time they still wail at the wall, the remaining wall. You must have seen these images of people wailing. But do you think the story stops there? Do you think that all our spiritual tradition gave up perpetual lamenting and no depth no faith no after the temple went down for the last time in AD 70 the people of God became the people of the book the new focus to strive for excellence to gain it with passion and to pass it on down the generations not too dissimilar to the striving and the understanding that we witnessed in this Western society. In fact, many of our Jewish brothers and sisters have in fact been some of the greatest contributors to that very drive. We are living in difficult times here in Wales. We are back in full lockdown for a fire break to keep us safe and to work together to reduce our COVID R rate and to help us embrace that difficulty. Let's not forget to spend time in the Bible, whether it's concerns you are not about the closing of book stalls, cards, gifts, and clothes aisles in supermarkets. Let's focus our precious time on precious things. Let's go to the Bible. Let us Christians in this place be people of the book, focusing on the precious Bible to seek the solace and the peace and the life helps that are needed now in this time. I don't know if you use a smartphone or not, but these days they all offer a screen time. People on average can easily knock up between six and eight hours of time a day. I know that scripture can be found on there, but imagine if you had the same love affair with the Bible as that. Even three hours would instantly begin to improve our true life in God. Even half of that time the average person spending on a smart time spent in the Bible would instantly improve our life in God. But forget screen time. The more you look in the Bible, the closer you get to God. And the closer you get to not only the whole purpose of life, but more immediately, the purpose of you the path God has created for you and how you can faithfully, fully be the you who you should be. A life lived 
to the full. Read the words of the Bible. Let them comfort you when you're disturbed and disturbed you when, you, when you're comfortable. Read the Bible. The only book in the world that reads you as you read them. The Bible, it starts with the Old Testament and it works through to Jesus. And the New Testament, see that begins from Jesus. Everything hangs on the Lord Jesus. Jesus is at the centre. Everything hangs too on the centre point of the story, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And that story fires and sustains hope that God will ultimately heal and transform the world. Mary Jones from the year 1800, she did not need to understand, she understood the six long years she saved her hard earned spends at 15 years of age. Each one brought her closer to God. The 26 miles she walked on the grand scheme of things were effortless because each step brought her closer to God. That 15 year old girl knew more than all the champions of modern society striving to prove and dissect things. People strive to understand and so naturally approach things with this, with this critical eye. What happens when you read the words of Jesus trustingly like Mary Jones? Well, you have to try it to find out. In theatre, there's a convention called a suspension of disbelief. Well, to truly find out how God's communicating through these sacred scriptures, to lay our doubts to one side and believe God is truly communicating through it. The Holy Spirit, Father God, Jesus, the living word. That's a really good place to start. And I assure you, if you do, if you start there, then you just won't want to stop. If you truly get a sense of God who created all that is, you'll want to try again and again and again to read scripture where we must stand in trust and humility before the text. So I beg you, give it a go. If you're new to faith and want to try it out, read the book of Mark. It's the shortest of the four Gospels and so the quickest to read. Read it with your disbelief suspended. Don't worry about whether or not people can walk on water or turn water into wine. Just listen with your heart rather than your doubts. Breathe deep. Read, notice the gentle whisper of God. And if you've been a solid Christian for a long time, then go back to scripture with fresh eyes and an open heart. Rekindle your first loves, knowing much more now how much you are loved by God. Spend time lovingly with God in the sacred and precious word that will not pass away. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm going to say now... The words of the Nicene Creed, which are hard fought for and affirm the faith in which we believe. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, 
the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And we come to our time now of intercession when we pray this Bible Sunday to Almighty God. So let us pray, whether you. Word of truth, you set your church ablaze with the fire of your love. Feed and inspire the lives of your servants to walk by this light. Bless and guide translators and scholars of the scriptures. That we may live a lively and godly faith. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Word of justice, your command sets the oppressed free and calls rulers to account. Raise up prophets and counsellors of wisdom and insight. Give courage to all who speak for the voiceless and proclaim your liberation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Word of hope, you are the bedrock of existence and our ultimate goal. Let your grace float and nourish and sustain all people, gathered into one body, people of every race and of every language, the songs of rejoicing, they may resound throughout the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Word of comfort and consolation, you restore what is diminished and recover what has been lost. Give solace to the weary, and mend the broken. Pour out your oil of healing on all our wounds and all our afflictions. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Word of life. You turn the darkness of death into the dawn of new life. Raise, we pray, all who have died. Turn our sorrow into dancing and our tears into laughter once more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Say together, merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. 
Lord Jesus Christ, you draw and welcome us, emptied of pride and hungry for your grace, to this your kingdom's feast. Nowhere can we find the food for which our souls cry out, but here, Lord, at your table. Invigorate and nourish us, good Lord, that in and through this bread and wine your love may meet us and your life complete us in the power and the glory of your kingdom. Amen. We obviously can't share uh, peace in our lockdown restrictions, but may the peace of Christ be deep in your hearts. This service now will go to the altar where we'll celebrate the Holy Eucharist. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. True and living God, the source of life for all creation, you have made us in your own image. Always and everywhere we give you thanks through Jesus Christ our Lord. In your love for us and in the fullness of time you sent your Son, to be the Saviour. The Word was made flesh, he loved among us, and we have seen his glory. For our sins and for all the world, he suffered death on the cross. You raised him to life in triumph and exalted him in glory. Through him, you send your Holy Spirit upon your church and make us your people. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we praise your glorious name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, almighty God, because on the night that he was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took bread. And when he had given you thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. A 
Rimo, ar ôl y sopa fe gymerodd y cwpan, ac wedi rhoi diolch i ti, fe drododd y ddynt a dweud, o fy chwm bawb, y cwpan hwn, gwrdd cyfamod newydd yn ymwaid i, a dwell y drosach y ffrost hawr am y ddeant cochobau, gwneuch hyn bod prof yr ofer chair, er tof, am dana. So let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come in glory. Therefore, loving God, we call in now the sacrifice of Christ your Son once for all upon the cross and the triumph of his resurrection. We ask you to accept this, our sacrifice of praise. Send your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts, that we may be fed with the body and blood of your Son and be filled with your life and goodness. Unite us in Christ and give us your peace, that we may do your work and be his body in the world. Do thou ef, do that ef, ac yn ddau ef, yn un da dyr y sbryd glan, dod hoth a lliog ei ddod ti wrth ar holl andrydedd a gygoniant yn oes oesoedd. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, in the language of our choosing, we boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, for we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. As we cannot receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ given for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith given in church today. I'm going to pray these words for you in your homes. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament 
I love you above all things and desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Thanks to the Lord, for he is gracious, his love is everlasting. Post-communion prayer. Gracious God, your Son Jesus Christ fed the hungry with bread of his life and the word of his kingdom. Renew your people with your heavenly grace, and in all our weakness, Sustain us by your true and living bread, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and of peace that all the world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you, and also with you. The Lord bless you, and keep watch over you. The Lord's face shine on you, and be gracious to you. Lord, look lovingly on you and give you his peace. A bendit you, hot lachio, a tart, a mab, a rasriklam, a bow and a cleath, a catrico, a dachui, and wasad. Amen. Our service has ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.